Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're gonna to be discussing new happenings with Starship, also the recent Starlink mission that placed 60 more satellites into orbit, SpaceX getting the shaft with NASA funding for the commercial crew program, and speaking of which, we'll talk Crew Dragon updates and upcoming missions, and even a new SpaceX video game. Then we'll finish with today's honorable mention. So Boca Chica is still pushing ahead to meet the deadline for launching Starship Mark 1 to 20 kilometers by the end of the year. Both of the lower half's fins have been reinstalled on the vehicle as it rests upon its launch mount. It was moved to the launch site a few weeks ago where crews have expanded the landing pad by pouring additional concrete. The upper half of the Mark 1 prototype is still located at the assembly site up Highway 4. And as we mentioned in the previous episode, you can see both forward fins are firmly installed with aerodynamic surfaces covering their hinges. And I should probably add that the new Highway 4 closure date is November 25th. As for the Mark II prototype in Cocoa, Florida, this drone footage shows that the aerodynamic covers are staged on site. You can even make out some that are for the landing legs. The team is preparing to install the final tank bulkhead on the ship, and new containers have arrived at the site as well, but their use is unknown at this time. SpaceX launched their first official Starlink mission this week, and it was one for the books. It was a follow-up to a previous Starlink mission that placed 60 operational prototype satellites into low Earth orbit. And while this week's payload was also placed upon a Falcon 9 rocket, it was the heaviest payload to date. And that's because these sats were version 1.0 a technical upgrade on several factors. Doubling the number of steerable phase array broadband beams, a 400% increase in data throughput per satellite, and the inclusion of a new KA band antenna system. This launch was also the first to use a previously flown fairing that was fished out of the ocean after a Falcon Heavy mission of Arabsat 6A. And it was the first rocket to fly a booster for a fourth time. That booster was spotted arriving at the port just this morning. You can see the Octagrabber holding onto it there. It's pretty sweet. Originally, the plan was to catch both fairing halves on two separate drone ships for this mission, which would have been another first, but those plans were ultimately nixed due to turbulent waters. Starlink is SpaceX's way to bring high-speed internet access to places that have poor connectivity or none at all. They can achieve this by placing many relay satellites in a low Earth orbit at 550 kilometers, rather than one satellite in geostationary orbit at 35,000 kilometers. This method reduces latency with connectivity. What's really impressive is that these Starlink sats have autonomous collision avoidance maneuvering capabilities and are designed to deorbit and completely burn up in the atmosphere at their end of life. SpaceX claims they will have global coverage after 24 launches, which would be 1,440 satellites. And this is the team based out of Washington State that is responsible for building these reflective beauties. So much crammed up brain power in that tiny room. The Office of the Attorney General released its audit of NASA yesterday and it unapologetically exposed NASA's favorable treatment of Boeing over its commercial crew competitor, which of course is SpaceX. Since the inception of the commercial crew program, Boeing has received $4.82 billion from NASA compared to SpaceX's 3.14. And Boeing was also granted an additional $287.2 million above their original fixed price, a sum that wasn't allotted to SpaceX, to ensure the contractor continued as a second commercial crew provider. Senior CCP officials believe that due to financial considerations, Boeing couldn't continue in the program unless they received the higher prices. The government has now published a per seat ticket price for Boeing Starliner capsule at $90 million, which is more than what we currently pay Russia to fly astronauts to the International Space Station. And SpaceX's Crew Dragon per seat cost is only $55 million. Elon responded to the news in a disheartened but professional tweet given the circumstances, writing, this doesn't seem right. It's not fair that Boeing gets so much more for the same thing. Oh, I can't wait to read some of your comments for this video. I'm actually kind of scared. But concerning Crew Dragon, the capsule and its Super Draco thrusters just underwent the highly anticipated static fire test on landing zone one at the Cape. The previous test in April decimated the capsule that was the first to reach and return from the space station, but this time, with new upgrades, it was a success. The 72nd event simulated the upcoming in-flight abort test, and it began with two one-second burns of the Draco thrusters that are used for attitude control and maneuvering. These will be used to reorient the spacecraft during the in-flight escape. Then the team completed a full duration firing of the Super Dracos for 9 seconds. These engines are designed to accelerate Dragon away from the Falcon booster in the event of an emergency, then followed with the reignition of two more Draco thrusts. But what's really interesting is that NASA confirmed new equipment that's being used on the capsule. These devices, called flaps, 
close off ports to the Super Drago thrusters before re-entering the atmosphere and prevent seawater from entering the engine nozzles upon splashdown. They too work successfully during the test. The in-flight aboard test is expected to occur next month, but so are two other Falcon 9 missions. CRS-19 is scheduled to launch and resupply the space station on December 4th, and Pacific-1, a Boeing broadband satellite, has been shipped to SpaceX's launch operations at the Cape, where it will be placed on top of a Falcon 9 rocket and then launched into orbit. The official date for this JCSAT-18 mission is currently December 15th, and there's still the possibility of another Starlink mission before the year's out. NASA has launched a new app that allows users to pilot Starliner or Crew Dragon from their phone. Players can select a mission, a crew of astronauts, build a rocket, launch it, and dock it to the space station, all while learning about the components and people of the commercial crew program. The app has received reviews. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. This just in, going to space can kill you. A new study published in the journal of Pajamas Network Open this week revealed that prolonged trips in microgravity can stop or even reverse blood flow in the upper bodies of astronauts. The study periodically looked at ultrasound tests of 11 International Space Station occupants and found that in 7 of the 11 crew members studied, blood flow became stagnant or completely reversed course in the left internal jugular vein, a major blood vessel of the neck, and clots were also found in 2 crew members after they returned to Earth. Six socks, bro. In case you weren't aware of your own anatomy, the valves of your heart were designed to only allow blood flow in one direction. Through differences in pressure, blood enters the heart through two large veins, the inferior and superior vena cava, emptying oxygen-poor blood from the body into the right atrium of the heart. As the ventricle contracts, blood leaves the heart through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery into the lungs where it's oxygenated. So I find this all pretty amazing and disgusting. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see some of you on Sunday for my talk about the current space race we find ourselves in. Should be fun. Regardless, I hope you have a great weekend. Until the next one, Godspeed. These SpaceX in the News episodes are made possible by the generous donations of my Patreon members. And if you'd like to see even more space-eccentric content, consider becoming a Patreon yourself. Even a dollar a month will get you access to exclusive videos not available here on YouTube. There's a link in the description. And God bless my friend.